Welcome back to Space of Grace Today. I am so excited that you are here. We continue our teaching series entitled Blessings in Disguise. If you missed previous sessions, we've provided the links in our description details below. Let's quickly review our takeaway points from session two. We explored purpose and identity, who we are and why we are here. We looked at intentional living, knowing where we are going. Friends, the answer to these questions are not found in another person. In fact, they can only be found in Christ alone. We dive right into part three of our series, Blessings in Disguise. Let's join now. God is committed to the plan he purposed in us before the foundation of the world. See, I have to keep remembering this. I am not an accident and I was not put on this planet just to breathe air and eat food. There must be something greater that I was created to do. Once you understand that concept about God and how he functions, you begin to look at your life, you look at the children that you're leading and guiding, and you begin to take things you intentionally, live life more intentionally. This is where my journey began because I had no vision, I had no purpose, I was just doing life. In my family, I was known as the black sheep. The child that always got in trouble and the child that always pushed the envelope. My oldest sister used to take licks for me. She used to get whipping for me because I'm the one who started the trouble. And from there on in, from high school, I never felt like I fit in. I always felt like I was different. Um, I live life hard and I live life fast. When I do something and I'm into something, I do it all the way, even if it's to my own uh, detriment. I was searching, but not finding. I was taken in and never getting satisfied. As an adult, that behavior continued. Drinking, partying, hanging and carousing with men, deceitful. All of these things I was indulging, still not satisfied. I felt like, look, there got to be more. Something is missing. And obviously, I haven't found it, so I continue along those lines. A turning point in my life, prior to me being homeless, a turning point in my life was sitting down and realizing that I had spent so many years on planet Earth and I had nothing to show. That's like going to work every day, spending every dime you had, and you were still bankrupt. I thought by getting married, that would solve my problem. How many of you know that created another problem? <laughs> it created a problem and it brought children, children into the world that also became a part of this situation. I found myself slipping in depression. Slipping in depression. Made all type of stupid choices and ended up homeless. Nowhere to go, bobbing around from house to house, taking someone taking me in, living with strangers who I did not know, crying. My son at the time had no idea. I could see him sometimes wondering what was going on because I would just be crying and he's looking at me and poor child didn't know what I was going through. Hardship is how most people find their way at the foot of the cross. But being saved and being changed or still lingering in the past keeps you stuck. And that's where I was. I was stuck. I had children. I had a husband. Hiding secrets also at the time. And the more I got closer to God, 
was the more that he began to expose things. And listen to me. When God began to show you yourself and your sin, it becomes like a burden on a weight on your shoulder that you want to unload. And in the process of me un un unburdening myself with some secrets, it cost me my marriage. But God did not abandon me. It ended in divorce. I ended up in a home that was dripping and, 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 and falling into bankruptcy with four children. Four children who was dependent on me alone to carry the load. My life, once again, at the crossroad. But God did not allow me to stay at the crossroad. Our greatest disappointment can be a blessing in disguise. At the time, I did not see it because here I was now. One income, four children, lots of bills. Can I get a witness in here? And I'm telling you, these were my darkest times and my saddest moments. I prayed in the middle of all my situation. I learned how to pray. I learned how to pray. Hallelujah. Conversation with God. I had nowhere to run. I had four young kids. And God had me exactly where he needed me. And sometimes, because we're so busy spinning our wheel, thinking um, being active means progress, God took the wheels from under me. So I was right where he needed me to be so I could hear him. Hannah's prayer, 1 Samuel 1.10, in her bitter distress, Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept many tears. Are you weeping? Are you weeping? Are you crying many tears? Because that is what pain does. It caused you to look at things differently. I had a lot of introspect time looking, where did I go wrong? When did this start? How did it happen? And God, in all of his wisdom, he's not concerned how it began. All he is concerned is where you are at now and what you're going to do about it. What are you going to do about it? <clears throat> Emotional pain and struggles brought me to God like it does with most prodigals. Now he had my <laughs> undivided attention undivided attention this is when the most exchange go on when we don't have our girlfriends on the phone talking when we're not wasting time watching TV we can hear from him and that's where he had me to the point where the house I lost that house in a bankruptcy and let me share a little about that because I was getting in the word, reading my Bible, before I lost the house, I had a vision. I was sitting in my living room and God showed me the house had fallen down in a hole. My feet was chained to the house and I was able to save my four children except myself. When I more or less awoke, I knew exactly what I needed to do. Cut my losses, pack sand, and get out of that house because I was there still trying to bargain with God about the house. And God was telling me, let it go. Let it go. How many of you in here tonight or this evening are holding on to stuff and God is saying, let it go. I can give you something better than what you're holding on to. Let it go.
What a powerful takeaway. A life in God always gives us something better. Tune in next time for part four of our teaching series, Blessings in Disguise. Your sister in the journey until next time saying, be encouraged. This is your inspiration on the way.